So welcome to Lunch and Learn. Now, for those that haven't been for a while or haven't been at all, this is a uh, totally free kind of complimentary learning session. We, we like to um, almost give back to the local business community and uh, give them a bit of education, a bit of information that they can implement in their business. And what I always say on the call is there's going to be stuff here today that you know, I'm sure there is, but if you can take away one thing as a minimum to implement into your marketing, into your businesses, whether you're a business owner or a marketing manager, then brilliant. You know, I'm, I'm that's my job done. Um, we used to do this in person. And uh, I think a few people on the call have, have attended in person before. We had, I think our biggest event was around Instagram and we had about 60, 50, 60 people in a room. Um, used to raise a lot of money for charity. We had lunches. Um, I'm not sure if there's the appetite from people to bring that back, but we've been doing it online ever since COVID and it seems to have worked. Uh, we get anywhere between 10 and 30, 40 people each time, depending on the subject. Uh, we haven't marketed as, it as much this month um, because we knew Rebecca was going to be away to take the pressure off. Uh, but we've got a good number in the room. So, um, you know, hopefully you guys will all learn something. Let me tick on. So there you go. There's my pretty picture. Uh, I'm Dave. For those that don't know, I run 146. I set up 146 13, no, 12 years ago. We're in our 13th year. Um, we deal with uh, anything from social media management um, to web design. Uh, I shouldn't be doing that, sorry, uh, to uh, SEO, so search projects um, and ad-based projects as well, so Google Ads, social ads. In fact, I've been, we've got another company in the group and I've just been uh, completing, uh, personally been uh, completing some uh, social ads that are going to run over in the US at the moment for a product we're selling. So we do all sorts, um, but there's four kind of key areas. And social is one of them. Social is something we're getting a lot of um, uh, a lot of leads from at the moment. We, we've got a lot of quotes out there at the moment with regards to kind of Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, specific LinkedIn, um, social media management uh, campaigns as well. So that's what we do. Anyway. Um, oh, yeah. And just just as I add, we, we've always supported for some reason. I've got the winter marketing strategy thing in the corner there. Ignore that. We've always supported Cynthia Spencer um, during our lunch and learns. We did it when we were running kind of paid ticketed events when it was in person. This is totally free, but you you should get it might be a week or so down the line because I'll wait for Rebecca to get back. But you might get a link um, afterwards with a link to our Just Giving page or to the Cynthia Spencer Just Giving it page. Uh, where if you did want to donate a t what would be a ticket fee, £2, £5, £20, whatever you want, you're more than welcome to. But there's no pressure to do that. There's no checks. Uh, it's just a charity we like to support. Anyway, getting on to the core topic, getting engagement on Instagram. Now, um, let's set the story a little bit because it's in it's becoming incredibly difficult. Um, also, I would say more challenging to get engagement across all of the social platforms. Facebook in particular is a lot of bugger for it. We've got campaigns. Uh, so we, we uh, Chloe is working on our Will to Mill. So we do a lot of work with Will to Mill, uh, the karting and outdoor activity centre over in uh, near, near Daventry. And uh, Chloe uh, collared me yesterday and said, Dave, I'm not entirely sure about this piece of content. I think it looks really good. I think it's really engaging. Uh, but I'm not entirely sure whether people are going to get it. So I had a quick look. It was a video with one of those kind of memes over the top um i really liked it i said crack on um this particular co piece of content has done really well on instagram but we've had next to no engagement on facebook um so it's becoming more challenging to gain engagement across socials more so facebook but in certain certain instances instagram as well instagram is certainly the easiest platform to get engagement on in our experience um but you you really do have to work hard at it and I think it depends on your it depends on what you're trying to achieve because we have some so we've we're working with a uh, or just about to set up a campaign for um a new garden center and nursery over in Doddington near Wellingborough Doddington nursery it's just been taken over by a family we've been working with for many years uh it was the old Wellingborough garden center um so they're doing loads over the next few years I've got a, a big plan to kind of transform the place almost into a Beckworth Emporium-esque facility if people are from Northamptonshire um so go and visit if you can but we've we we've, we've just started working with them and their aim is to gain more followers quite quickly so that's their their target you know that's what they want us to achieve for them so we we would apply certain strategies to be able to achieve that a strategy we would actually take you through today 
but for certain people, it might just be about engagement amongst their existing followers because engagement might generate interest and and again more followers and sales and leads. So it depends on what your um, it depends on what your aims are as well as to why you might be wanting to get engagement. But I'm going to talk you through today a number of different things, strategies um, that we adopt with our clients uh, on quite a religious basis uh because it shouldn't just be about posting and this is where people kind of get a little bit confused or well, not confused get lazy i'd say they just post stuff out all the time um and sometimes it's the same content that doesn't generate any engagement so i'm going to talk you through loads of stuff today hopefully anyway let's crack on right so first of all let's let's define engagement for those that don't know so engagement for me really quickly uh will be uh likes um comments uh, shares, uh, comments or engagement on stories. That for me, link clicks maybe from your profile. That for me is engaging, is defining engagement. It's stuff beyond just viewing a post because you'll get within your Instagram statistics, you will get your impression rate. So how many impressions you're getting on each post uh, or reel. But for me, it should go beyond that. It should be about engagement. And it's really important to define your engagement uh, and make sure you understand that. It's what, what kind of goes beyond the views. Um, what is a good engagement rate? So typically, I think industry standard is anything over 0.98%. Now, the way to work this out is take the amount of people that have engaged per post, divide that by the impressions, so the amount of people that have seen it, and then times that by 100. Um, and that will give you your engagement rate. Um, and typically, you'll see a bit of a relationship between the amount of people that engage and the, the amount of impressions you've got as well. Because the more people that engage, the more Instagram will push it out to other people and it will gain more impressions. Um, generally speaking, across some of our campaigns, we generate engagement rates of anywhere between one and maybe three or four uh, percent, typically. Um, some campaigns work a little bit less than that if they're not if they're not let's say B2C uh, focus if they're B2B it's a bit more challenging but I would say a good engagement rate is anywhere just below the one percent around about the one percent mark so it might be worth, go, worth going through some of your posts some of your reels do that simple formula how many people have engaged you'll get that just by clicking on the insights on each post divide that by uh, the amount of impressions you got on that post and times that by 100 with that um by knowing that figure you can then apply um the same learnings you've got from those posts to other posts in the future and that's something i want to come on to in a in a short while so i'll, I'll bounce back to that in a second and why is it important why is it important to know uh first of all your engagement rate uh but also why is engagement as a whole important well it's important to know your engagement rate because it's important to know what posts have been working and secondly, it's really important to gain as much engagement as possible, whether that's likes, comments, shares, uh, engagements on stories, clicks through to your website, because it shows that your followers are doing stuff. It increases trust for other, other followers as well. So if they see something that's got a lot of engagement, they're more likely to click into the comments. I'm not sure if you're like me. Uh, if if I see something, if I see a post on Instagram that's got a lot of comments. I kind of think, well, this is popular. Why is it popular? And I go, I almost go um, scouting through the comments and spend ages through the comments. Uh, sometimes the comments are funnier than the actual post. Um, so uh, there's many reasons as to why engagement's important. Uh, the crux of it comes down to if people are engaging within your business, they're more likely to take action, potentially contact you, generate a lead, or buy something from you, or visit your hair salon. Uh, that's why it's important. Um, the obvious stuff, I guess. So I'm going to come on to some simple um, but quite effective and often forgotten about strategies that we adopt with our clients. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, by the way, I might cough a little bit today. I've um, uh, Liz had COVID a couple of weeks ago. I think she's possibly given it to me. I don't think I've got it at the moment, but I think I've got the aftermath of it. Um, there seems to be so much going around. So I am a bit coughy. Um, by the way, feel free to chat amongst yourself in the webinar chat. If you've got any questions, I will try and answer them. Um, yeah, but we'll crack on. So first thing, um, actually engage with your followers. And it goes a little bit beyond this, which I'll come on to in a second, but actually engage with your followers. Now, this is something a lot of people forget. And 
it's not just about engaging with your followers, but it's how you engage with your followers. So if you are putting content out there that generates engagements, generates con uh, comments, generally, because that's the only way you can really engage with your followers. If they're generating, if they're um, putting comments on a particular post, comment back. But don't just comment back with, yeah, I agree, or thanks, or thanks for the comment. Try and generate more conversation. Try and generate, uh, try and ask more questions. Um, and Instagram make this quite quite easy now because they've almost got the comment thread whereby someone comments and you can comment underneath it and keeps it all nicely organized. Um, but the benefit of you actually commenting back constructively and trying to generate more conversation is you increase that trust and you also increase the possibility of that post being seen by other people because Instagram is going to see that they like long form comments. They're going to see those comments. They're going to see that interaction and they're going to think, well, these guys are conversing quite well here. Let's show it to more people. And that's exactly what the algorithm does. So to me, it has two key benefits. It implies trust, added trust. Uh, it gets you conversing with, with your followers. Conversation is always a good thing. But that's also then in turn going to show it to more people. So actually engaging with your followers is absolutely key. Now, this goes a little bit further, though, because as I said, it's uh, one... You've got the one side of it, which is engaging with your followers. The second thing is actually engaging with them and trying to converse back and ask more questions and trying to generate a bit more conversation. Um, but if you want to, if your strategy is to increase your customer base, then you should be engaging on other profiles as well. So think about who your target audience is. Whenever we take a client on board, we always go through a strategy uh, document with them. We think about who their target audience is. Is it the local public? Um, is it local businesses? Is it a specific type of business? So, for example, we're um, uh, going through the process of uh, strategizing with a business finance company at the moment. They've seen um, we've got evidence to suggest Instagram might be uh, quite good for them. And their target audience uh, is on Instagram. So they've defined a couple, uh, a couple of audiences that typically buy, well, not buy, but apply to a business finance with them. Um, so what we're going to do to almost push them in front of that audience and to increase their follower rate is start engaging with those profiles within their target audience. One of their target audiences was um, tree surgeons, would you believe? They've got a number of audiences, but one of them was tree surgeons. Um, tree surgeons, uh, we found are quite active on Instagram because it's quite a visual business. So one of the things we, we would be doing is uh, starting to follow and starting to engage with their content. Now, engaging with their content gets you in their kind of eye line. It gets you seen by them. Um, and that in turn should generate more followers, more engagement over time. So don't just engage with your followers. Um, and if and obviously when you do, make sure it's long form content, make sure it's generating that conversation, but also try and engage with, follow, uh, with profiles within your target audience. And that's what a lot of people forget. Engage with long form content, get in their DMs um, if, if you can, uh, if you've got a strategy to do that. Um, but engaging with your followers, engage with, with the people you follow is absolutely crucial to not just generating more engagement, but to increasing the impressions of, of your posts and future posts. Because if Instagram sees that a post has done particularly well, they will feed future posts into more people's feeds. So engagement's key. But also... Uh, thirdly, engage with people you follow, engage with the target audience, follow more people, uh, build your network around Instagram. And that's what a lot of people forget to do. Now, if you have a business that is quite uh, B2C focused, let's say, <clears throat> try and try and engage, uh, try and follow your followers. Um, uh, there, there's a lot of people out there that follow people to get followers back. I don't agree with that. But if people follow you, and you know that they're an advocate of your business, if you know that they bought off you or they're a customer, then follow them back and engage with them. Um, but the other thing to do is engage with other high profile local businesses. So in Northamptonshire, for example, I know we've got Lava Boot uh, hairdressing in the room. In Northamptonshire, um, you've got the Northampton Life Instagram feed. Uh, it's a feed that we run internally. It's one of our kind of side hustles. Um, follow that, engage with that because you've got a different follower base. You've got a different audience on North Ants Live 
that will go through those comments, they'll see those comments, and they'll see Lava Boot Hairdressing, because you're commenting on the Northampton Life feed. Find, um, find local or within your target audience uh, profiles that have uh, an, a, a, a decent amount of followers that you can kind of uh, engage with and kind of get your name out to. So it's not just about engaging with your followers, but engaging with other profiles as well. First one. Number two, uh, rehash your top performing posts. So um, I talk a lot about looking at your analytics when it comes to anything, whether it's Google, whether it's Instagram, socials, generally emails. Um, looking at your analytics is absolutely crucial because, and this is something a lot of people don't do, still don't do. Um, what it will tell you is what is working, and that's crucial. Um, and by looking at what is working, you can apply that same um, formula, let's say, to future posts. So, for example, we had um, we had a post go out on, I think, 146 yesterday, uh, which was um, just off the cuff. We had some of the team in the office, kind of half the team in the office, and we were talking about making cups of tea. And I think I made I made Alicia a cup of tea. Uh, she said, um, yeah, solid six out of ten. I was like, thanks. Um, and then we kind of thought, OK, well, I'll make you a cup of tea. Let's, let's make a bit of a feature of this. Well, let's put it on Instagram. We actually got a little bit of engagement off the back of Instagram, off the back of doing that. Now, in the future, if we look back on our, on our analytics and we see that maybe that was our top performing post of the month, um, then we would kind of think, okay, well, let's let's look at why that was our top performing post. It was a little bit more laid back. It was in the form of a reel. It was quite quick and took through different uh, kind of the the process of making a cup of tea and you know the team's reaction to that cup of tea uh, in a short twenty second reel. So we might look to try that that kind of same formula on future posts to try and generate more engagement. And to me, I'd be thinking, okay, well, how can we get the team more involved in some more kind of fun, laid back, office related you know, standard activities like making tea, like making lunch, maybe. Um, and that's how we would, uh, th uh, that's how we would rehash almost our top performing posts. Now we can almost create a series of that as well. So we've got Alicia making cups of tea, we'll do Chloe next. I know we've got that um, kind of ready to go out. We'll do me, we'll do Tom, we'll do whoever. Um, and again, that will help generate more engagement. But the beauty of that is, I know it's some, almost some fun, crappy post, but it's going to help push our future content as well. And the future content might be more educational or salesy, and it's gonna help get that seen as well. So by looking within your Instagram insights and working out what has worked well, you can almost rehash that, use the same formula, and hopefully, not all the time, but hopefully create more top performing posts in the future. <laughs> Excuse me. Now you're always going to have uh, posts that don't perform well, that's part and parcel of, you know, the journey you're on, um, on Instagram. But the idea is, um, same with when we do A-B testing for any ad campaigns, we will set up maybe three ads and then we'll take the top performing uh, one, maybe two, and then we'll rehash them and create another three ads. And then we'll keep rehashing them so that we keep getting better and better over time. Um, so, it's, yeah, as again, it's really important to rehash your top performing post. It will help you work out what is working and what isn't working one of the other things you can do as well which is along the same kind of lines and it's something else I'll, I'll um look at again later is have a look at your competitors posts what's working well for your competitors what's working well for your competition what is generating loads of engagement for your competition now bear in mind um the playing field might be a little bit it might be a little bit uneven you might have less followers or more followers so engagement levels for them might be different but you you might get a um, an idea as to what is working and what isn't working. And when we look at marketing as a whole, any kind of marketing we look at, um, whether it's search-based, social media-based, we always look at our competitors or our clients' competitors. In fact, uh, we had the team here yesterday planning out uh, a new social media campaign. And one of the first things they do in their strategy document is they look at three key competitors within the target audience. That's competitors that we've either chosen, that we believe are competitors, or our client has chosen. And we ideally are trying to ask our client. Uh, because what that does show us is what they're doing, good and bad, um, and what we can almost mimic. And I say mimic, I don't mean copy, 
I mean, apply that almost that same formula. So if they've got, for example, hair salon related, if they have um, live, um, uh, not necessarily live, but video tutorials on how to do your hair in a certain way and they're performing incredibly well and you're not doing them, then do them because chances are they're going to perform incredibly well. Um, so it just gives you an idea as to not just what your top performing posts are, but also by looking at the competition, what their top performing posts are. And um, and if they're general engagement, generally speaking, the same should apply. Won't always, but it should apply. <clears throat> right. Um, next of all, use some of the engagement features on Instagram. Now, I'm specifically talking about Instagram uh, stories here. Um, Instagram stories have developed over time. If you're not using them, use them. It's another great opportunity to make sure you're getting in front of your feed and actually tracking it because you can see who has actually, um, sorry, I'm trying to keep an eye on time as well. Um, you can see who is physically viewing your Instagram story when, um, when you're pushing stuff up there. Don't always just publish a story. Try and use some of the engagement features within the Instagram stories as well. Um, you've got things like ask a question where people can comment back. We did that on the Northampton live feed yesterday. We got a few comments back. You can do the poll thing where people can drag up and down. You know, how how do you think about this? This will all add to your engagement figures. So if people are engaging with your Instagram stories more and more, it will help some of your future posts and help in future engagement. It will help stuff get seen, essentially, because Instagram, the algorithm works in the way that the more engagement you get across anything you do, whether it's stories or posts, um, the more your stuff will be seen. Because Instagram's thinking, this stuff is generally quite liked. It's engaged with. People are taking action. Let's push it out there more. So by utilizing those engagement features within Instagram and by using the poll, by using the um, uh, the question and answer thing, there's a number of different things you can do on there. Um, it will aid engagement because you're, you're actively promoting engagement. And again, in turn, that will aid engagement and um, uh, further views on your post over time as well. So use some of those engagement features on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Next one, utilize retargeting your custom audience ads. Right, this is gonna go straight over some people's heads, I know, uh, but I'm gonna try and explain it in um, a simple format as possible. A lot of people don't use Facebook ads, and they don't necessarily use it correctly if they do use it. Uh, a lot of people will boost a post and think, right, great, that's that's working, that's going out. Um, my recommendation for anyone, if you're running an Instagram campaign, if you're serious about Instagram, if, you, if you're getting engagement on Instagram, if you're getting leads on Instagram, set aside a small budget. It can be as, as small or as large as you want. Test, you know, test and play around with it. Uh, test a small budget for Instagram ads. Now, you can um, quite easily run Instagram ads. Uh, you used to be able to run them on your phone. I don't know whether you can anymore. We run them through the uh, um, Meta Business Suite. Um, you can run them through there. Uh, it will give you the option to just put it on Instagram. Um, you can utilize um, posts, so further promote posts that you've uh, you've kind of had um, had go out before. So that's not a bad strategy to, uh, to kind of uh, use. And the idea with this is, if you've got posts that are getting, you know, loads of engagement, first of all, it might be worth pushing them a little bit further. So just, you know, to general people, to a, to a, uh, a larger target audience, maybe a, a local target audience if you're local. Um, or you could regularly use retargeting ads or custom audience ads to generate even more engagement. Now, retargeting ads are ads targeted at uh, customers who have, <clears throat> um, previously access your website, for example, or they may have um, previously engaged with you. So you can actually target people, retarget people with adverts who have um, commented, liked certain posts or viewed videos, for example. You can push ads back in front of them. And the reason to do that, the, the benefit of doing that is they are active as a follower, they they like your stuff, they comment on your stuff, they engage with your stuff, so they're warm. So at that point, you can push further content in front of them and warn them up even further. Or you could push the sales messages in front of them and get them to engage with that because they are warm. You could also use custom audience ads. Now, an example of a custom audience ad is 
if, for example, again, I'm going to link this back to, uh, only because I know Shui's in the room, I'm going to link this back to a hair salon. So imagine your hair salon has 1,000 customers. Or let, let's say 10,000 customers. Let's say you've got 10,000 customers. That's a, I mean, to be fair, Shui, you would be a millionaire if you had 10,000 customers. But let's say you've got 10,000 customers, uh, regular customers. Um, you can take their email addresses because you've got that data. You can feed it into Facebook, create an audience. And by the way, I'm not going to tell you how to do this today. Either come back to me and ask me or Google's your friend on this one. There's loads of YouTube stuff that will show you. You can feed that into a Facebook audience or a meta audience. Let's call it a meta audience. And it will essentially assign um, Instagram profiles to each of those email addresses, assuming there's an Instagram profile associated with that email address. And then you can push adverts or posts in front of those people that you know are already your customers and get them to engage further. Now, you might kind of think, well, why do I want, if they're already my customer, why do I want them to engage further? Well, having them engage further creates um, hope overall more engagement across your feed because you've got more people engaging for starters more people are going to see stuff it's a bit of a um um what's the term i'm looking for it kind of you know rolls on as it were um so the more engagement you get generally the more engagement you're going to get overall and the more views you're going to get it, it all kind of links in but also you can push specialist messages to those people maybe sales messages are a little bit warmer they're more likely to take on board sales messages, be a bit warmer to it um, in front of those people. So utilize by utilizing retargeting or custom audience ads, you're able to push adverts, content, whatever it is in front of people that are A, more likely to engage, but B, they're a little bit warmer, so they're more likely to take further action if that is a sale. So think about how you can potentially use that. And like I said, you can set all that up within the meta um, business, uh, business manager, uh, and within Ads Manager, there's a few things you'd have to go through to, to be able to achieve that. You'd need your pixel on your website. You'd need custom event settings up. Um, you'd need your domain verifying. And then you can go through and setting that up. But there's there's loads of information on YouTube that would take you through that. Or contact your developer, contact your social media company, contact us, and we can look at doing that for you. Um, but it's a great way of, again, generating more engagement and potentially generating sales as well. Um, right, next one, prioritize reels. Um, so we tend to find um, this. Well, this is a bit of a weird one because I've actually gone through and done research on our Northampton live feed because our Northampton live feed generates a lot more engagement. We've got 12, uh, 12 and a half thousand followers. Um, it generates a lot more engagement than our 146 feed. So I'm going to base everything I, I talk about on that because there's a little bit more data to play with. So I have always said in the past, prioritize reels. Reels um from a kind of if you're looking for the textbook answer it generates more engagement it generates more reach uh people like them more than your standard photos <clears throat> i'm going to come on and poo poo that idea in a second um but before i do i am going to stick with prioritize reels try and create reels there's um a number of different ways you can do that taking short form video using things like uh, what's the app that i'm trying to think of the app that our team use uh, two seconds because I I get them to do it all, uh, so I I always forget. Uh, what's it called? What's it called? What's it called? I will get there. Where's my social media? Here we go. Uh, can't find it. Brilliant. Um, CapCut. There we go. Tracy. I <laughs> I literally said it the moment that came through. Uh, CapCut's great for creating reels. You there's also other tools that you can use. Um, I'm not going to look through my phone to find a couple more. Um, but CapCut is great for creating reels. You can sh create short kind of form video, little snippets, and then pull it together, create some nice transitions. Great way of creating reels. You can also use it for images, you know, just bang images in, create a reel. Um, the textbook version, like I said, is it generally creates more engagement and more impressions. That's not necessarily accurate. We found across our Northampton live feed that we tend to prioritize reels every two in three posts is probably a reel uh what we tend to find is we get more impressions on a reel so our reels uh for north Ants lives every time we post one out we get anywhere between um three and twenty thousand impressions uh for the really good content up to 20 or thousand 
for the average content, we'll get a minimum, absolute minimum of 3,000 impressions. The engagement rate, uh, I looked at the engagement rate across the last three reels that we ran on Northampton Live. It was typically around about two to two and a half percent. So we we got a load of impressions. Though it wasn't our best content on the last three. I, I mean, I thought they were brilliant. They were averaging about 5,000, 6,000 uh, impressions. And we get an engagement rate around about two two uh, percent. Um, but I looked at, I compared it to the last three images that we posted. Now the images, we were getting a much lower uh, impression rate. So impressions, by the way, uh, for anyone, I'm sure everyone in the room does know, but impressions is basically the amount of times people see something. Um, if I compare it to reach, Facebook uses reach quite a lot. If someone walked into our office now and there was just me in here, uh, sorry, if there was me and Tom in here, for example, um, they would, and they held something up and said, oh, look at this advert. Uh, that would have reached two people, so me and Tom. But if Tom then turned his back and I saw it a further two times, it would have reached two people, the impressions would be four. So impressions takes into account the amount of times people have seen things. So <clears throat> just to clarify. Um, so I compared the images to the reels. Our impressions were a lot lower on the images. So it's seen by less people. Impressions were between one and 3,000. Reels are generally between three and 20,000. Um, but our engagement rate was higher. Our engagement rate was about 5%. So it was almost quality over quantity, in a sense. We had on the reels, we had more people seeing it. There's an advantage to that. But we had more people engaging, but that's because we had way more people seeing it. The engagement rate, however, as a percentage was lower. The images, we had less people seeing it. Less people engaging because also you've had less people seeing it, but the engagement rate, the percentage of people engaging versus seeing it was a lot higher. Um, so my my take on this is you have to uh, find a middle ground between imagery and reels. There's a real place for imagery when it's really well done. Prioritize reels because it gets more reach, more engagement, um, more impressions. But for me, don't forget about images as well. Don't forget about putting those images in, maybe even the uh, the carousel images. But the key thing here, I only knew that because I checked the analytics. So you guys should be looking at the impression, uh, the insights around Instagram as well. Find out what works and do more of it. If it's reels and if images bomb, do more reels. If images are great, if they really work and reels bomb, do more images. Um, <clears throat> right, next one, collaborate with others. There are going to be people, businesses, influencers, customers that um, have a good follower base that you can collaborate with. And there is a great way. Uh, I'm sure some of the people in the room have done it. Millie, I think I've seen your um, your company feed do it. I'd, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but there's a great way of being able to collaborate with others on there. And yeah, you do it loads, Millie. Thank you. Um, and this is where influencers kind of come into their own. Because, uh, and it works. Thank you, Millie. Um, you can, when you set up a post, and we do it a lot for Northampton Life, by the way. When you set up a post and you build a post, it gives you the option to set up a collaboration with another profile. Um, you you can't do it without their permission. So you put in their profile. It will then ping them a notification. Say, this person wants to collaborate with you. If they accept it, the content you create goes on both feeds. And it goes on both feeds, not just, it doesn't just appear on, you know, if you go into the profile, it will show down there as well. Um, so what you get, the massive benefit is you get the content on your feed, which is going to your followers, but it then goes out to their followers as well. So people are going to start kind of cross-engaging and they're going to see the stuff that you do. It's great form of brand awareness. It's going to count towards your engagement rate. Um, you, you quit in, in a sense. So then it comes down to who do you collaborate with? So for our North Hans Life stuff, we have um two types of content we've got content that's paid for that's people who approach us so pay uh via our media pack um and we put on content on their feed we do a collaboration regardless uh so uh we we will uh, build the content they pay us we put it on our feed they take advantage of our followers but also we do a collaboration so we take advantage of theirs um there's a second type of person that we plan out our content quite carefully on North Hans Life and we look at trends. So we're coming up to fireworks, we're coming up to October, we're coming up to, we're in October, coming up to October, we're in October. Uh, we were coming up to uh, pumpkin spice lattes, if anyone likes a pumpkin spice latte. Um, uh, Alicia put together a guide on it and she started to do some content around it. 
And she um, went out to a particular business, did some content around spiced uh, pumpkin lattes, and she collaborated. And again, it appeared on both feeds. So <clears throat> we've got two different customer bases we can collaborate with. If I was looking at, um, I'm trying to think of cleaning. I'm going to challenge myself here because uh, I know Anne Brebner's in the room and she runs a cleaning company. Um, <clears throat> who can you collaborate with? Uh, think about if you're doing a uh, business clean. Um, you're, um, you're going out cleaning one of your uh, customers, your business customers. Uh, I'm not sure if you still do the corporate stuff. Uh, but let's say you're doing that. You might want to collaborate with them and do a live kind of clean thing and you know do a real base on their clean. Collaborate with them. Brilliant. Um, you might want to collaborate with another type of uh, business within your uh, kind of target audience. Um, you might want to, I know you do a lot of the jam stuff and I saw the, um, um, there was a, a county business, I can't remember the name, but you did some content with them. You might want to do a reel and collaborate with them, for example, on your feed. So there's an, you've got to kind of think outside the box a little bit. I'm sure I could come up with more ideas if, if I had a bit more time. Um, Cherie, hairdressing, as an example, um, maybe try and collaborate with some of your suppliers. That might be a big deal. Uh, it might be you try and collaborate with local influencers. If you've got an influencer that comes into the salon, or even if you don't, try and reach out to them. Um, you might want to collaborate with them, and it goes onto both feeds. Uh, you might want to do a collaboration with something like North Hands Life. Get, um, this is not a sales thing, by the way, but you could you know, pay one of our team to come in, have the experience, have a collaboration thing, goes on your feed, goes on our feed, kind of double whammy. There's a number of different things you can do there. Um, Millie, I'm going to read what you said. Is it better to originally post on your account and add them as a collaborator or for them to post and add you as a collaborator? I would say it's, it's better to originally post on your account and add them as a collaborator. But I would test and measure. If you're doing a lot of this, I would test and measure on both sides. What kind of engagement rates are you getting if it's on their feed or your feed? And what are you trying to achieve here? Are you trying to achieve more followers, more engagement on your feed, more engage, you know, more brand awareness on their feed? I think it depends on the specifics. Uh, but again, test and measure, best way to do it, because it will it will be different for you and for other uh, as it is for other people. So test and measure. Um so yes, Instagram has that great ability for you to collaborate with other profiles. Try and think about ways you can do that because it will again increase your in uh, engagement rate. <clears throat> excuse me um it's much much worse at night by the way it seems to be all right in the day uh my cough phase um right next thing this sounds pretty self-explanatory but it's uh still think still something i think we can dig into write captions that encourage engagement now there's one thing there's writing and caption uh, there's writing captions that are good they're you know um they tell a story you know all this malarkey they might give a call to action or whatever. But is it encouraging engagement? Can you write your captions to physically encourage people to comment, to like, to share? Think about the call to action at the end, because the call to action, if people are reading, if you say, comment on your favorite, or comment on this, comment on that, it will get people commenting. I guarantee you, you will get more people commenting. So write, cop uh, write captions, write captions, that physically encourage engagement. Um, if you're doing a, you might want to do a, a competition, a pile of sorts. Again, um, make sure that you're specific with your wording at the end to say comment to do this, share to do that, because it will encourage uh, engagement. So the captions are crucial. Um, we see a lot of people that just put, a, put something in there. That's it. But by just adding that thing in at the end, what are your thoughts? Comment to tell me your thoughts. Comment to tell me um, your tips. Comment to tell me your best such and such. It will generate engagement. Right, post your content at the best times. Uh, and this is very much a test and measure. Look at your analytics, Jobby. Um, within Instagram, you've got insights and it will tell you the best time to post your content. Um, now, it might be a little bit skewed because it might be that you've been posting your content at the same time every day. That's when it get, it's getting engagement. And so it's a tiny little bit skewed. So you might want to test at different times. You might want to manually test, post something out, you know, morning, afternoon, evening, night, uh, and manually manually have a look at the insights and see what's generating more engagement. Uh, but there is actually the tool within the insights on Instagram that tells you or estimates the best times to post your content. 
utilize that post it at the best times you might be surprised at when the best times are as well we found on some client accounts it's between like 11 and 1 um and on i think our north Hans live feed hang on let me check what our north Hans live feed is um if i can get in there, in there quickly two sex all right let me have a great look um <clears throat> no, it's not letting me. Um, no, it's not letting me. Um, I don't want to spend ages doing it and leave you guys hanging. Um, if you, uh, when you have a look at it, when you have a look at the tool, and um, uh, like I said, if it shows you the best times, try it. I think I think as on North End's Life was between like six and seven at night, which would kind of make sense. People are back at home, just had dinner, scrolling Instagram. I think that's when we get the most engagement. So we try and send uh, content out um, around about those kind of times, but we do play around with the other times as well. So utilize that tool, find out what times are best to post your content and just try it. But do test other times as well, because you might find that they generate good engagement as well. And it will depend on the type of content you're pushing out there too. <clears throat> encourage customer posts, uh, encourage customer and employee posts using branded hashtags. Um, we, Whenever we take a client on board, we try and encourage whether, more so on LinkedIn to be fair, but we were thinking about this with Instagram and we don't see why it shouldn't work on Instagram. We try and encourage the employee to get involved where possible. And the employee to post their own content. And that that isn't posting the typical post a blog from the website, post this from the website, post out, you know, get them to kind of um post their own stuff. Leave them to do it within within some guidelines if required, set some social media guidelines. Um, but try and get them to kind of talk in their own voice and post what they want to post now. But encourage them to, in, encourage employees to post, encourage customers to post. Uh, one of the um, um, most successful things we ever did was we had a client, uh, a hair, sorry, this wasn't you guys, um, Sheree. We had a hair client, I won't name them. We had a hair client years and years ago. And um, we created a hashtag uh, specific for them. And we had um, posters, uh, stickers on the mirrors within their salon. They encouraged people to take a picture of their finished result and hashtag it. And it got so much engagement. It was stupid. It just it just blew up. And they weren't like a massive hair salon either. Um, so find ways to encourage your employees to use your branded hashtag, to create a branded hashtag. It doesn't just have to be hashtag Lava Boot Hair. It can be Love Lava or something along those lines, think about something creative, um, get them to utilize it, but also get your employees to be creative and post out their own content on their own feeds. Um, I've seen it from some of the guys uh, that work at Lava Boot. Cherie, I've seen it from time to time. Encourage them to do it. Maybe set them um, a bit of a leaderboard, uh, per se. We've just been talking to, I'm trying to think who the company was. We've just been talking to, ah, yes, I know. We're quoting for a company at the moment um on how we can get them more engaged in their social media their staff more engaged in their social media and one of the ways uh one of the things we mentioned there was it might be worth trying to gamify the process so this was about not trying to get the uh, the employees to post on social media although that will come in time it's trying to get them to appear in photos videos reels things like that uh, of which some of them quite a few of them are a little bit anti at the moment so we talked about trying to gamify the process and almost give them um, a leaderboard on how many, um, uh, how much content they got involved in, how much content they created themselves, um, and then provide um, rewards at the end of that process. So you might want to look at that. If you get your employees involved in sharing on Instagram, then um, you can almost gamify it and uh, think about a leaderboard. You know who's posted what, who's created so many posts, and provide them with a reward at the end, a bottle of something or, or whatnot. Because if you think about it. They're essentially advocates for your business. They're posting out content from your business and promoting you, marketing you. It's another, it's a, another marketing stream, essentially. And whether it's an employee or a customer, having those advocates is absolutely, I mean, I mean, that is that's top dollar marketing because they're the people that are really selling it. They're selling it based on their own experiences. There's nothing more powerful than that. 
Um, we talk a, a lot about the trust factor within marketing and how do we create that trust factor? We talk about Google reviews, trust pilot reviews, trying to get as many reviews as possible. There's nothing more powerful than getting a customer or, a, or an employee to do a post on your behalf of their own back. So by encouraging them subtly to do that, could uh, I mean, it, it, it could get you seen by a lot more people. So um, yeah, encourage customer and employee posts using branded tags. Um, <clears throat> want any more advice on that? Just let me know. Um, second to last one, uh, we're running on time as well at the moment. Review and change your hashtags. Um, a lot of people we see just post hashtags willy-nilly. They have no hashtag strategy. It's something we we look at whenever we come into any business. We look at the hashtags. We look at the hashtags that are trending. <clears throat> hashtags are there to get seen. Hashtags are there for people to follow, uh, to see more relevant content. Um, if people follow certain hashtags, they will see your content potentially. If you're one of those companies that are putting hashtags down, and it's just, I mean, it's, it's totally irrelevant. Let's say, let, let's say for example you're putting a hashtag that is hair. I mean, if you think about who your target audience is, your target audience are, uh, so I'm thinking about Lava Boot here, uh, Shuri. Your target audience is local people. You're not gonna get people coming from 30 miles away. So your target audience really are within five, maybe 10 miles. You might, you know, you might get people who are stuck with you for a while uh, and come a little bit further, but your target audience is generally local people. So local people, Yes, you might see a hashtag that says hashtag hair. You might see, you might have done your homework and said, oh, right, there's 20,000 people that follow hashtag hair. Brilliant, let's get our content seen. Yeah, there's there's pros and cons to that. You might generate more engagement, <clears throat> but is it going to be you know relevant engagement? Probably not. If you look at more, relate, more Northampton related hashtags, <clears throat> excuse me, this is ha these are hashtags that are local. They've got local people following because it's Northampton. They might not be hair related, but let's be fair, everyone has their hair cut at some point in their life. Well, not everyone, um, but most people do. That might be a little bit more relevant and you might find you get a bit more engagement off the back of that. But again, test and measure. Um, so I would really encourage people to review and change their hashtags. If you're just one of these people that just puts random hashtags on to stop it, have it when you're typing in the hashtag, it will tell you the, type, the amount of people that would generally search for that kind of thing. It will give you other hashtags that you can potentially use. Try different hashtags and try and think outside the box because it might not be your hair hashtags that will work as well. It might be your more local hashtags that would work kind of better. So, uh, yeah, again, when you're putting stuff in, type in hashtags, type in the hashtags you think, look at the amount of um, people that are following those hashtags and um, think outside the box a little bit with it because your more general product service related hashtags might not work if you're a local local business okay um and then finally finally and this is um this is probably one of the most important things produce better content because people engage with specific pieces of content because they they like it they relate to it um they find it funny they um tracy i'll come back onto your question in a sec if you don't mind um they they find it inspirational they find it emotional they connect with it so if if you're getting low engagement rates you're either hitting the wrong audience or you're just not producing good content and good content for me should be a a balance between your graphical type of content you know that you if you especially if you're b2b sometimes you can't get away from that because you can't it's, sometimes it's quite difficult for certain businesses to produce in the moment, behind the scenes, video-based content. For stuff like Lava Boot, it's easy. You know, you've got so much, you're creating vis visual stuff, you're you're creating haircuts, you know, hair colors, all this, you everything you do is visual. Uh, Millie, again, your stuff is visual. Um, so it's quite easy for you to do that. How you gather that is it might come in content sessions or you know, with with customer uh, customer content, but if you're not getting the engagement levels you want at the moment, uh, if it's generally below one percent, then you have to just produce better content. And the best way possible to do this is, in my eyes, do your research. 
look at your competitors, look at people outside your industry as well, see what they're doing and see if you can almost relate it to what you're doing. Um, <clears throat> because if your competitors are doing, your competitors will be posting for starters. If they're doing something and it's getting engagement, then they're generally, they're generally producing good content. And that's stuff you can uh you can use you know you can apply that you don't copy don't copy you can apply that same formula though so if they're like i said if they're producing daily tips on hair care as an example i don't know if that gets engagement but just as an example if they're producing that kind of visual real based content in a certain fashion they're flashing between different things and they, they've got some commentary going on with you you know nicely um um kind of visual captions on the bottom then take that and almost use that as inspiration for some of your content. Competitive research for us is absolutely key. That's how we build all our campaigns. You know, we've we've got a team here. They're not here today. They're all working from home today. Um, uh, working from home today. Um, no, I have faith they are. If you've got, um, uh, so yeah, when, when our when our team take on any client. Uh, and we've tried to drastically improve this over the last couple of years, by the way, because we realized we probably weren't doing things as well as we could be doing. Uh, the first thing they look at is competitor research. What are, the, what are their competitors doing? What can we do better? Um, we also just brainstorm it. Uh, and this is something you can do. You can just sit around a table and brainstorm with, with people. Don't do too many people. We say three max, really. Brainstorming more than that can get a little bit like, you know, they've got an opinion, they've got an opinion, they, you know, it goes all over the shop. But brainstorm it with people, ask people's opinion of the content they would like to see. Um, and that's, you know, Alicia and Chloe were sat down there yesterday uh, talking about content to do with a new client campaign. And they were just brainstorming loads of stuff. Uh, they were looking at competitors, brainstorming off the back of that. That's how your ideas kind of come to life. And that's how you produce better content. Um, and for me, everything we've spoken about today applies in tiny little bits. It will generate, I guarantee you, I don't often provide guarantees, but I guarantee you it will, it will provide you with more engagement. But this is the main part. Produce better content, produce better reels, produce real content, in the moment content, behind the scenes content. If you produce, if you're able to produce real content, I don't mean reels, I mean real in the moment, live, you know, videos, images, as opposed to graphical stuff. Do that over the graphical stuff, but test and measure. You know, it's about that balance of reels, images, graphics. Uh, but this is a crux. Produce better content. Right, I'm going to go, come on to some questions. And Millie, I'm going to take on yours first, and Tracy, I'll come to you. Do you have any tips for getting through a creative block? Sometimes having to think creatively all the time is super overwhelming. Uh, yeah, you're absolutely spot on. Um, I struggle at times. I know the team struggle uh, from time to time. For me, competitor research is the one. That's the one that we always go back to. Um what else can I think of? Um, I mean, non-competitive research. Look at other look at other profiles that aren't in your industry. Look at how they're doing things. I mean, for, like I said, for me, that's it. That's if you're ever struggling from a creativity side of things, do your research. I get moaned at for the amount of times I'm on TikTok, but okay, I'm looking at stuff on TikTok generally anyway. But um, but for me, it's about inspiration. We we work with um, I mentioned earlier we work with Wilton Mill over in um, Wilton. Uh, would you believe? Um, and for us, every quarter, we have to go out and we get in the carts, we get in the quads, we get the archery out, we get the shotguns out. We we create content. And a couple of weeks before, we plan that content. And the first thing we do is we hit the socials. What's been trending? Um, what's been working amongst competitor socials? And also, off the back of other types of posts that isn't necessarily competitor-based stuff, let's find inspiration on other stuff we can do. Let's find inspiration based on days of the year. Uh, and I, I, personally, I'm, I'm not a massive fan of days of the year. You know, National Pumpkin Day, apparently, today. Leave the sodding pumpkins for Halloween, for Christ's sake. Uh, that's just me, but anyway. Um, and that's only because I saw a piece of content earlier. And you know what? It was a good piece of content. Don't get me wrong. I just think it's fluffy. Um, but look at seasons. So we're coming into... Christmas period and we're planning for Christmas for Wilton so we've already started ordering costumes <laughs> um we've started planning out the type of content we want to get on track and film you know that's the kind of stuff we're doing now so think about seasons times of the year trends uh, this is all the kind of stuff that helps you with insp um, inspiration 
uh can can relate my screen time on tiktok is disgustingly high yeah mine too um my missus constantly moans at me for it um but yeah that's the kind of stuff i would do uh tracy coming back to yours what tools to you use for hashtag research if any um i would so we've got two tools that we'd use um i'd personally use the uh instagram app it tells you the amount of uh kind of uh the amount of um impressions you'd get on a keyword on a hashtag it would also give you relatable hashtags we've also we use a a tool an australian tool called sked s-k-e-d um that uh is pretty good it's pretty good it has its bugs but again within that has uh, hashtag research as well uh so if you want to use the tool there's other tools out there that might do it um i can only give you advice on scared and the actual instagram tool unfortunately because they're the only tools we use but there will be other tools out there google's your friend on that one uh tracy but instagram will will do what you want it to do um and yeah that's it we've literally bang on one o'clock bloody hell um if you've got any other questions, guys, please ask them in the chat because I'm happy to stay on for five more minutes if uh, if you want. But otherwise, um, we're doing the same thing again next month. But we're gonna we're gonna look at uh, LinkedIn and growing your LinkedIn network without using premium. And again, applying the same kind of tactics uh, in the same kind of fashion because um, there are certain ways that you can grow LinkedIn. And something we're actually doing at the moment we've we've taken a vertical audience, um, uh, kind of an industry. We're trying to grow our um, network around that industry. So join us next month, 30th of November. Um, Rebecca will send out all of the links uh, end of next week, I would have thought, because she's back on Wednesday. Uh, so you'll see that. So please book onto that totally free again. Um, but that's it this month. Hopefully you found some value. Um, I have. It's been quite, quite good for us, actually, kind of going through that stuff. Uh, thank you for sticking along um and if you've got any questions you know this is what we do reach out um we're you know we're we're taking on client campaigns at the moment a few client campaigns so if you're uh if you're looking for uh, an agency to work with you then 